Okay, the new law does have some limitations. Pot purchasers must be at least 21 years old. Colorado residents can possess up to one ounce. Non-residents are limited to a quarter ounce. Pot shops cannot open until 8 a.m. and must close by midnight. So, well, I, you know, I, I grew up in Colorado, so this, yeah, exactly, right, because people get the munchies like right around the time that it's going to close. Your pot shop is open going to be the hard part. No, but I, mean, I, I wasn't really that surprised that Colorado sort of took the lead on this. I grew up there. It's a very sort of interesting state. It's got an interesting mix of sort of pro-gun, but also pro very much individual freedom. But what does this do kind of the, to the drug legalization movement? Is this going to catch on or is Colorado going to be like an outlier? Well, you know what's really interesting about this, actually, is that this is one of the few issues, right, where you see like the progressives are really moved on it, really want this to happen. And it's still such a hot button issue here in Washington. Well, where I live in Washington, not here in the blizzard, right. about the blizzard <laughs> attack in New York I'm stuck in. But, um, but uh, it, you know, Obama has shown like very little... Uh, interest in in evolving on this issue. I mean, he right. evolved on gay marriage, he's evolved on other things, but this is sort of one of those things where they still can't touch it at the national level, right? But this kind of bubbling up from the from the state perspective seems to really be a place where the left is trying to make this happen on, on the marijuana thing. And Colorado is now going to be the big test, right? Yep. Does all the things that have been said about it for a long time, does it increase crime? Does it raise tax revenue? Does it, does it save the state money? Everything is now going to be looked at and examined and assuming people are not stoned, you know, very, very, very well analyzed. Well, they're analyzed. But, you know, I do wonder, though, Steve, if this does become an issue that does dovetail into kind of the overall conversation about fairness and inequity. Um, if you look at just who gets arrested uh, for possession of marijuana, in 2012, 749,825 people. That's a lot of people arrested. But 48% uh, of all drug arrests were for marijuana, 88% just for possession. And when you then look at the racial gap in terms of who gets arrested, uh, African Americans, four times as likely as whites to be arrested on charges of marijuana, even though the two groups don't use the, the, the drug at the same rate. So, so the idea that this is sort of a fairness issue and a resource issue, uh, I'm wondering why President Obama and why the Democrats don't jump up and sort of embrace this. Well, I, yeah, what strikes me about this issue is I, I think there's a lot of energy on the left about this issue, but I think there's a, there's a lot of generational energy. I think it, 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 it's something that breaks across party lines and you get to younger voters. I can't, how many young, you know, I'm saying young, under 40, very, very libertarian-minded conservatives were all for Ron Paul? last year in his presidential race, and this was one of the preeminent issues that did it. What, what I noticed on this issue is I, I, I think there's a lot more room for, sort of, there's a lot more of a sort of a bipartisan, cross-partisan support for it when you get away from elected officials. But when you get to elected officials, you, know, you got Rand Paul out there sort of on the right. You, you have Barack Obama who wants to be quiet. You have the governor of Colorado. He wants to stay away from this. The mayor of Denver, the, the political leadership class wants to stay away from this, but I think underneath them, there's a lot of cross-pollination going on. It's kind of You know, it's interesting, because poll after poll shows that Americans, by and large, support decriminalizing, right. um, and a lot of the medicinal use is, let's face it, probably not. I mean, there's a pretty wide band of medicinal use in a lot of states yeah, right now. Yeah, people who have a head cold and say, you so, know, I need some. So, uh, but I think, I, think it's, I think the main issue that drives people is not the morality around drugs or whether it's a gateway drug. It is that issue of incarceration and the huge cost, the huge cost to society of incarcerating these people, I mean, you saw the numbers, and also the cost of the drug war. Going after people for smoking pot just yeah. does not seem like money well spent. All right, well, let's change gears real quick. Uh, Pope Francis may be earning accolades from everyone, from Time Magazine to Paul Ryan, but billionaire Home Depot CEO and Republican mega donor Ken Langone isn't having it. In an interview with CNBC, Langone called the Pope's statements on income inequality, quote, generalities, and accused the Pope of focusing on the negative. As Langone put it, rich people in one country don't act the same as rich people in another country. Um, and Langone apparently actually relayed his concerns to the Archbishop of New York, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, um, who had a rather obvious response. I said, well, Ken, that would be a misunderstanding of the Holy Father's uh, message. <laughs> The Pope loves poor people. He also loves rich people. He loves people, all right? I, I just find it absolutely <laughs> hysterical that we are now at the point where the rich are feeling that they need to have the actual love of, 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 of the Pope conveyed to them personally. I mean, how much more entitlement can you have than saying we also need the Pope to show us the love? Well, it obviously isn't affecting their power very much if they're able to actually communicate that to the Pope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what these rich people were able to do. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think I'm able to do that. Um, but what's interesting about this is... Uh, this pope is such an interesting division of political uh, of political division now because you have I mean the pope who is really like the international leader of the fight against LGBT rights and abortion rights uh, is now sort of a darling of the left 
<laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the right wing, which generally sort of, you know, would like to see it. And he's also sort of raised a profile of Catholicism, made Catholicism much more interesting now. Um, sort of helped get it past some of the bad years it went through, and yet the right, which would be interested in people becoming Catholics probably, or becoming Christians, um, they don't like him as much. The, people, <laughs> the, the right-wing leaders are pushing back from him. So this is another, this is another example of this. This guy, you know, is a, a strong Republican donor, a big Republican donor, and uh, he's expressing concern with this pope that a lot of other Republican leaders are expressing. He's yeah. also in a fundraising campaign right now for um, St. Patrick, so he may, in fact, be casting as to why he's having trouble raising money, but, you know, having good Catholic school girl that I am. I've never seen the Catholic Church actually sort of skew toward the rich. They've always had that ethos of try to make the world more equal. It's very much about the poor. So I think it's a lot of rhetoric here. And I think if he's having challenges with his fundraising campaign, it probably doesn't have a lot to do with what's happening at the Vatican. And, and there's the whole biblical rich man eyes and needles and such things that, that also go on too. And interestingly, the Ken Langone is a big Chris Christie booster. Wanted to get him to run. That's right. But I wanted to quickly get you guys' take on, on Harry Reid, uh, Senator, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, very quickly. Do, do, do Republicans filibuster this. I, I, I think employment. right now I think that's an open question. It, it's, it, it, it's two questions here. Can you get to 60 votes? If you're Harry Reid putting this on the floor, can you get to 60 votes? You know you have Dean Heller from Nevada, state with the highest unemployment rate in the country. He's for this. I think if Susan Collins from Maine, she's for this. The question is, can you pick off a few others? Is it McCain? Is it Flake from Arizona? Is it something like that? The other question is, are there going to be any of these red state Democrats, Democrat. like a Heidi Heitkamp from North Dakota, we talked about Mark Pryor from Arkansas earlier, who say no to something like this and complicate it for Reid? And then if you get it through the Senate, you still got the House. You still got the House. All right, last word goes to Steve Kornacki. All right, thank you so much to Evan, Gabriel, Diane, and of course, Steve. Don't forget to watch Steve this and every weekend on Up at 8 a.m. Eastern right here on MSNBC. That, of course, is all for now. I'll see you tonight when I fill in for Lawrence on The Last Word. And back